Hello, it's your boy Consational here. In this video, we are going to be taking a look at Alco 60% Budget Hall Effect Keyboard, the Alco 3061SHE. This is a great booting alternative on a budget. This is a $199 keyboard. It's feature packed. You get custom actuation, 8K polling, but only on four keys, dynamic keystrokes, mod tap, and toggle key. I did have some things that I didn't really like about this keyboard that much, which I will talk about later on in this video. Now, this is only a personal preference thing. Remember guys, what works for me might not work for you. Affiliate link in the description down below, but before you buy, please make sure to watch the video. To start, I just wanna quickly talk about the unboxing experience and its content. Um, the unboxing experience is all right. There is really nothing worth talking about. Inside the box, you get your keyboard with dust cover, a rubber USB-A to USB-C cable, a switch and keycap puller and a user manual. At this price point, it's something that you would expect. I wish they included a few extra switches at least, but it'd be like that sometimes. Build quality on the 3061 SHE is decent. It's mostly plastic and it feels really cheap. You get an Alco branding on the bottom right of the case, which I really like. This keyboard has PBT keycaps, which are pretty decent. It's plain looking, no crazy fonts or anything like that. They feel similar to my Huntsman V2 keycaps. It is slightly textured and it's not slippery. Under the keyboard, you have four rubber feet to help the keyboard stay in place. One thing I really like about this keyboard is that it comes with a two-stage tilt angle adjustment. It's something that I really don't see with any other keyboard nowadays. And here is a preview of the keyboard disassembled. The bottom case is all plastic. If you guys are wondering, this is not compatible with a GH 60 case the pcb does not fit inside my tofu redux i'm unable to screw it down and also the usb-c port does not align to the hole there is no foam between the case and pcb you can probably add some if you want i do wish alco added some foam here here is your pcb it's got a little lube in there from the switches i find that the magnetic switches with holes under tend to leak or drip some lube it's not going to mess up with your keyboard or anything like that. It's something that I just want to mention just in case some of you are wondering what that is. On top of that, there is a porn foam between the PCB and this black aluminum plate. It's very easy to disassemble and assemble if you do wish to mod this keyboard, although the mods you can do on this keyboard is pretty limited. As of now, I don't know any compatible case you can upgrade to, but you have some options with switches. I've seen the new Kale Flame magnetic switches in AliExpress, but it's expensive as shit. It's like $60 for 70 pieces. The 3061 SHE is using Kale Sakura pink magnetic switches. I'm not really a big fan of these switches. They are good for gaming and typing, but I do have one minor issue or complaint with these switches. These has quite a bit of key wobble, very similar to the Lacquer 60s. The Sakura pink is definitely inferior to the new cream yellow magnetic V2 switches that you can find inside the Mod 007 V3 or the Dragon keyboard and also the Gateron Jades that is in my Wu-Tang. When it comes to the stabilizers on this keyboard, it's great. The looping is consistent, but I do have a minimal rattle on my spacebar. Here is a quick sound test for you. When it comes to the performance, it's practically the same as the Unix Dragon keyboard. Everything is flawless. It's working perfectly for me. The rapid trigger implementation is great and consistent. When rapidly pressing multiple inputs at once, all the keys registers. There is no miss input or whatsoever. One thing I'd like to see though is for Akko to also develop their own version of the Rappy Snappy. I think that would be a cool feature to add to this keyboard. Other than that, I don't really have any complaints and I'm very pleased with the performance of this keyboard. When it comes to the software experience, it's exactly the same. They just added, you know, some more features to it. Uh, your main page, this is where you map your keys. Under DKS is where you can configure your your dynamic keystroke mod tab and toggle key under custom actuation this is where you can configure your actuation points so to configure your actuation points all you need to do is to click custom tab it will deselect all keys so press a single key 
select your desired um, actuation and reset then hit confirm you can also select multiple keys at once and then you can set the value there uh, one thing I would like to mention is for example you set your ASD together to your desired actuation and let's say you want to do V next uh, make sure to deselect like the keys that you previously set because if you do not so let's say I set ASD to like 0.1 and 3.7 millimeter reset and then I press V and then I set this one to like let's say 2 millimeter and 2 millimeter and I hit confirm it will also change the value of the ASD so it is important to deselect the key that you just set before you know moving on to the next key so you guys can see there is a yellow border on double ASD that means that current key is deselected and the rest of the key doesn't have any border that means it does not have any value so when I click WASD you guys can see it has a white border that just means the WASD is currently selected next up is the roar settings so this one has pros and cons um, for example if you set WASD to roar mode um, it will prioritize roar mode these four keys will be running at 8k and the rest of the key is going to be operating at a lower scan rate I'm not sure if it's true 8000 hertz scan rate but it feels a little bit higher than 1k that's for sure because I can actually feel like the difference between roar mode on and off the WASD just feels a lot more snappier and more responsive as opposed to the keys that are not using roar mode but you know it does cause some issue uh for people who place apex legends for example if you set roar mode to WASD um you're not going to be able to perform a single super glide so you know if you play apex legends make sure to not use the roar mode unless um you put your crouch and jump inside the roar mode which honestly i don't really know uh, i'd rather have my double asd my main movement key set to like roar mode but you know for games like cs2 and valorant uh you're really not gonna have an issue and also i would like to mention that if you're wondering um how does the rest of the keys outside roar mode feels you know it feels the exact same thing just not as responsive as the WASD but you know there's no delays or any miss inputs or anything like that like for example if I set one key to like 0.1 millimeter press and then 3.7 millimeter on the reset it will still perform the same it's still gonna actuate really fast it's still gonna reset really fast it's just you know it just doesn't have that snappiness you know you know what I'm saying but it should not give you any sort of like disadvantage or whatsoever in my own personal opinion under the main page this is where you can change your fn settings um the one with the red highlight um you're not able to change these settings but the one without and the one with green you should be able to so for example if you want to use your arrow keys uh, all you need to do is press fn plus w um, this will be on hold okay it's not toggle so if i press like fn plus w you're going to be stuck with arrow keys only some keys will work but it, you're not going to be able to type or whatsoever okay so in order to get out of that all you need to do is press fn w it's a little bit inconvenient for me to use this feature but you know it's something that you can get used to but this is very important for you to know if you ended up buying this keyboard and you're looking to use your arrow keys under your fn settings you have your macro i don't use that uh light this is where you can configure your rgb settings share my account uh app version this is where you can update your app version uh and then also your firmware version I just want to mention that I have been testing uh, new firmers from Akko on my Mod 007 V3 keyboard, Year the Dragon, and also the 3061 SHE, and none of them is working flawlessly. It seems like the Akko engineers are still not, you know, they haven't hit the spot yet, you know what I'm saying? If they release a firmer version in the future, and you ended up buying this keyboard, and you updated to that firmware and it's not working flawlessly you can always come back to this video you know click on my description box and you know i'll put the link there and you can just download it and then reset your firmware to original also um if you change your switches or some of the keys are not working let's say you 
put new ones in or you just simply remove them um on the bottom right this is where you can calibrate your keyboard but yeah um other than that um you know the software experience is eh, acceptable um nothing crazy i don't really mind it i i got so used to it that i don't really care but you know i hope that they update this and actually make it better but for now it'll do the 306 one SHE is a great performance budget booting alternative for 109 dollars i think it's a very good keyboard for competitive gaming i think it's a fantastic gaming keyboard for its price point it performs really well in game it has decent acoustics and build quality it's got plenty of useful features as well the downside of this keyboard is the limited customizability i wish they used like a ga60 compatible pcb the stock switches could also be better i feel like they should have used a cream magnetic v2 that was in the year's dragon keyboard or maybe the new kill flame magnetic switches also i wish the software experience could be better other than that i can't really complain considering the price of this product I do recommend this product to people who want a 60% plug and play keyboard and won't mind the switches and limited customizability. I would put this product above the Apex Pro Mini and the Lightning 60 since the price of the Lightning 60 actually went up to $129.99 again. And yeah, this is by far one of the cheapest, if not the cheapest, great performing HE keyboard in the market right now. And that's it for this video. If you find this video helpful, like, share, and subscribe. Thank you for watching. See you on to the next one.